control tab if you change your spacing um, anything in here uh, your width length of your fume effects container you have to re-simulate to get the effects to work all right so we just re-simulated that that's that's better I, <coughs> I used the time scale slowed it down so now it's not too fast and fake looking you know it's it's more of a normal it's coming up more normal it's still moving around and flowing with the wind warp in there all right, so that's good. We're going to leave that like that. And what's next? What should we... All right, I'm going to add some turbulence now to it, along with the... We already have the uh, wind warp in there doing some, but I'm also going to add some extra turbulence. And I'm going to turn my X turbulence right here. This will adjust X, Y, and Z. If this is selected here, it's by default pressed down, so it's going to automatically adjust those. So we'll just set that to maybe 45, and turn always turn your detail up to 5, so you get as much detail in that turbulence as possible. And since this is kind of a small fire, we're going to go with a small scale. Uh, if it's a big scale, it's going to leave the turbulence is going to be like big, you know, big wiggles in your fire. This is a smaller file and a, a fire, and I want it to kind of really blow around erratic, so I'm going to go with more of a smaller scale to get make it ripple faster back and forth. So that's why I went with a smaller scale. Uh, that should work. Go ahead and simulate that now. And just to make this go a little bit quicker, since it's only for the tutorial, I'm gonna bring my iterations down. Uh, don't do this if you're gonna be doing a um, uh, you know, final sequence, unless you like the way the fire looks. I'm just going to bring it down. It's just It'll help things go a little bit quicker. But the more iterations, more quality, more simulation steps, the better quality you'll get. Uh, usually in the simulation steps, if you may, you'll get like banding in your fire and stuff. Uh, so this will help decrease that banding if you add more simulation steps, but will slow down the render time quite a bit. Usually like three is a good number to go with during a final process. Um, but if your fire looks good and you're happy with it the way it is, and maybe you can bring it into After Effects later and add some motion blur to it, it'll actually hide some of that stuff, and it'll be quicker than if you were waiting for a simulation steps of three. And, you know, all these higher qualities. Some, sometimes you can get away with a lower quality fire just by doing that. You know, add the motion blur, add maybe um, a blur to it, um, you know, a vector blur to it. And uh, those little things, it'll help smooth the fire out, and you can get away with quicker simulations. So, you know, you can try some of that stuff. But um, for now, we're just going to go turn it down for this tutorial, and I'll simulate it and come back when it's done. All right, let's see how that looks. That's looking much better. All right, and just, just, remember, um, just remember, don't get... Um, discouraged that this tutorial is very long and everything. Um, you can see the, oh by the way, the turbulence, you know, it's just moving things around better. Um, the tutorials, you know, it doesn't take this long to make a fire. Once you know what pretty much what you're doing in Fume Effects, you can make this in a few minutes, uh, get this fire going in the flow. Uh, of course I'm talking extra because I'm just really trying to get you to understand what all these little things are as best I can. So, you know, the tutorial's slow and everything, but you know, it doesn't take this long to make the fire unless you're coming up with a specific fire. Some fires can take long just because you have to keep simulating. You're waiting on the simulations. You're not waiting on the effects, you know, the adjustments. You're just waiting because you have to simulate a little bit and see what it looks like and change the setting and simulate. You know, that's where it takes time. But once you get familiar with it, you kind of learn um, what to kind of start with, and it makes things go a lot quicker. So, you know, it doesn't take that long. It's not too hard. It's just a lot of trial and error stuff when you're working with it. But there we go. I, I think the flow's looking pretty good. So now I'm going to go and start adding some more detail to this now. Um, so what we'll do is go and turn my spacing down now, and just so I can show you what the spacing thing is. When we adjust our spacing, see this little square in this corner here? That's showing you the voxel sizes of, um, you know, what the voxel sizes are of the fire is going to be. So picture, say you had like, um, you know, a hand here, right? And the hand, you know, say, say the hand was like so big, and maybe maybe the size of this arrow here, 
right, and you have this fat voxel coming off your fingertip, right, and you just want to create a little flame off your fingertip, well, that's not going to work because the voxel's way too big, and it's going to be a big blobby voxel coming off the finger. So in order to do something off of a finger that size, you need to look at that voxel and turn down your spacing slowly to try to imagine the little voxels come fitting off of your finger, right? And it's going to slow down a simulation like crazy, use up a lot more memory as you can see here, um, but it's going to add more detail because the voxels are going to be smaller and you get a lot more detail in it. So just, just don't go too big or too small on that. Uh, unless you're really doing a high res uh, fire and you don't care about the waiting time, uh, try to keep it as big as you can to get the fire that you're looking for. So, you know, start off with like, you know, usually it's somewhere under one, you know, when you have a size of, you know, under like 75, 75, 75, or under 100, that's usually around a good quality fire. And of course, more, of course, for really high resolution stuff. But, you know, if, if you can get away with uh, keeping it, you know, at a decent size, then just leave it at that. If your fire looks good at a higher spacing, and if you're lucky, then just leave it. You know, just, you don't have to go lower, but, you know, you only go lower for more detail. I'm just going to leave it at 1.3 for the tutorial, just to give you an idea. But, yeah, that's, you know, that's important when it comes to detail, so... Uh, Alright, we'll go ahead and simulate this now. This way the only thing we'll have to tweak is in the rendering tab. Alright, that took a little uh, 155, 1 minute and 55 seconds just to give you an idea in case you're wondering, whoa, this is taking forever to simulate. Is this right? You know, if you're doing something wrong. Minute and 55 to simulate. I have a dual core machine, AMD F on 64, 2.8 gigahertz. Um, just to, you know, give you a, a rough estimation if you think you're doing something wrong, then you'll know. Alright, so in there, we added more detail to it, so now my voxels are going to be smaller, and you'll notice this a lot more when we go and uh, render the, uh, or mess with the colors. And the thing that, to get the look we're going for, uh, changing stuff in your rendering tab is really going to make a huge difference on the way this fire looks. Alright, so what we need to do... is, well, I guess we'll leave 1.2, we're going to start tweaking, lead, lead to opacity there, I guess, and, but here's, you know, this is, this is where you can make the fire look a certain way, you know, tweak down the color, you know, you can play with these two settings, go back and forth to get what look we're going for. Here's a little graph map that, you know, will adjust the outer edge of the fire, the inner core and all that stuff. I'm not going to go into that here because, you know, I'm not really liking using this too much for this kind of fire. I'm just going to disable it, just turn it off, and we're going to get the look we're going for by adjusting the color. So we're going to right-click on here and choose Key Mode, and that'll give us a little, you know, gradient to work with. And we'll bring this up halfway, I guess, 0.5 just to bring that up to start and okay I'll, I'll leave this up to 0.25 or so and we won't mess with anything else right now for this tutorial you know there's I mean you can add fluid mapping to this but you'd have to re-simulate with fluid mapping that's a whole nother tutorial but uh you know that that just e even adds more detail to your fire there, but longer simulations uh, that's, you know, look how long the tutorial is now just by learning how to do fire. So uh, there's many tutorials that will need to be done uh, using all those different ways of doing your fire. But this is definitely getting you started at least. Now what we need to do is adjust the color. So leave it at the high and pass it a little bit over one color of 0.5. You know, no magic setting, just that's a good start. And start adjusting your color. So what we're going to do is we're going to change this one, double click on it, change it to black, and just keep an eye on how the fire is looking. This one we can set to black, and you can see it, you know, it's hiding our fire, getting rid of the fire. If we change it to red, you can see basically what it's doing. Let me just change, just change like weird, weird colors here. 